welcome to my channel and today we will be making grillo yes grillo is a very famous haitian dish that almost all americans think of as soon as they think about haitian food and let me go ahead and show you guys how it is done all right when making grillo you need pork shoulder so the one in the middle is the pork shoulder you would ask them for one pork shoulder or how much you want and have them cut it up for you in medium pieces even though you say medium the pieces is going to be fairly big but that is okay because you don't want it to be too small so cut it up in medium pieces here i have 11 pounds of grill you guys and what i'm going to do is i'm going to start off by cleaning my meat um this is how you cut up your limes when cleaning your meat You're, i'm gonna do it for you guys one more time to see how to cut up the lime that way you can make sure you get all the juice in there okay you're gonna take the lime you're gonna cut it right there then you're gonna flip it and cut the other side like that then the part that's left in the middle you're gonna go ahead and remove that skin so you can have um so it can be easier for you to get access to the juices all right now what i'm doing is i'm going ahead and removing all of the meat from the bowl that i have and the reason why i'm doing this is because when i'm putting that lime juice on my meat i want to make sure every single piece of pork gets some of that lime juice you guys so the reason why i took them out is because i want to dedicate time to each and every single one of them so i'm gonna make sure i get every single one because after i'm putting the lime on one that's when i'm gonna put it back in a bowl and i'm gonna continue to do this so that way i know every single piece had got some love every single piece got some lime every single piece got some got some some okay all right and I usually tell you guys cleaning your meat is optional because some people don't like to clean their meat. But when cooking pork, I would highly, highly recommend cleaning your meat. And if you're making grill, this is a Haitian dish, of course. And this is how you have to clean your meat, you guys, especially pork. We're not going to play around with that. You're going to clean your meat very, very thoroughly, you guys. All right. And now what I'm going to do is just maneuver the um, meat all around to make sure it's really getting some of that lime juice, you guys. Then I'm going to go ahead and i'm going to remove my gloves you guys because i hate wearing gloves because of cross contamination and i have to change them like 50 times so i'm gonna go ahead and remove them because i'm gonna touch other stuff and i don't want to put that meat juice on the other stuff i'm gonna touch so i'm gonna go ahead and get my sour oranges and i'm gonna pour that on there i poured about a half a cup of that in there and then i'm gonna go ahead and i'm going to get my lemon juice and for the lemon juice i put like one fourth cup in there because i already use so much lime so i don't need to use a lot and then i'm going to use my white distilled vinegar and i'm gonna use about a half a cup of that and i'm gonna put it all over that pork you guys then i'm gonna go ahead and get some salt and i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna put the salt all over there i put about two tablespoons of salt and this is for cleaning this is not for seasoning all right so i'm gonna go ahead and put my um some new gloves on some fresh clean gloves you guys and i'm gonna go ahead and i'm going to maneuver that meat all around so it could get some of those juices that we just put in there and all this meat can get sanitized and it can be delicious you guys and with grio you know how i always tell you guys i usually tell you guys to let it sit in this acidic mixture that we made for like 10 to 15 minutes with grio you want to let it sit for like four hours overnight if possible you guys because it really needs to get that acidic inside there and on the side here you guys i'm just making some pickles because pickles often go with grio i'm not gonna go into detail on how to make pickles because i do have a video for that i will have it in the description box a link on how to make that all right how to get to that video on how to make that so now i went ahead and i boiled some hot water and i'm pouring it all over the pork you guys and you could boil it doesn't matter how much hot water you boil as long as it's enough and it could cover up all the meat then we're gonna go ahead and maneuver the meat all around so all of it could get some of that hot water and let it sit for about five minutes all right and then right here in a big old pot um i'm gonna go ahead and add a half a cup of a piece and i will have in the description box a link on how to make a piece you guys all right if you don't already know how to make it 
it. Then I'm gonna go ahead and pour out the pork um, from that hot water, you guys. And I'm just gonna go ahead and rinse them off and I'm gonna go ahead and just put them inside of the um, big, um, the big pot that I had just put the ear piece in you guys and you don't have to worry too much about squeezing squeezing a lot of um, water out of this it doesn't really matter okay so we're just gonna go ahead and rinse all of that pork and put it inside of the big big pot all right so now what I'm gonna go do is mix it around so all of it could get some of that ear piece and then I'm gonna go ahead and add a half a cup of ear piece on the top of that I always like to add a half a cup at the bottom and a half a cup at the top because I feel like it's easier to get it to get everywhere that way so that's why I'm doing it like that and the thing about grill to pork I should say is the pork shoulder it looks like a lot but once you boil it and you fry it it's not that much for real so when you're making this get more than you think you're going to need because it looks it's gonna be way less than it looks right now when it's done cooking okay and here I'm adding a half a cup of this mojo marinade just to give it some more acidic in there okay all right then I'm gonna go ahead and add some Maggie all right the Maggie that I'm using today is the blue one but the other one I showed you in my other hand that's the one I usually use it's the same thing you guys but the other one the blue one is straight from Haiti and when I find it I try to use it so if you cannot find a blue one the other one is fine that's the one i usually use anyway you guys all right sometime when i can be fancy and i find a blue one that's why i use it and i'm using two cubes of maggie you guys and this is how Maggie looks because some people might never bought it before. Make sure it says hard and crumbly at the bottom, you guys. There is a soft one. You do not want to get that one. That's the wrong one. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some seasoning salt, you guys. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add, um, I added two tablespoons and one teaspoon of seasoning salt because we want to make sure our thing is popping and we want to make sure the flavor is there you guys you know you know black people we don't play about our seasoning all right so i'm just gonna go ahead and finish adding all my seasoning in there and i'm gonna mix it thoroughly to make sure all of my meat got some of that seasoning you guys then if possible you want to let this sit overnight again so that you can have um the seasoning get into that meat or let it sit for a couple of hours hours all right and this right here is parsley and thyme tied together and i'm just gonna put that in there and i'm gonna take two bonnet peppers and i'm gonna put it in there this is the string that i use to tie up my parsley and thyme it's actually the string that you use to um tie up your chicken on thanksgiving but that's the string that i use all right and there we go the um bonnet peppers i told you about the green ones that mean they're not spicy all right and like i said if it's possible you want to let this sit overnight so it can marinate if it's not possible then we you know we got to make it do what it do all right I usually like to make um, clean my meat and season my meat and stuff two days before making real so the first day it will sit in acidic then the next day it will sit in seasoning and then the last day is when I cook it but it's not it don't always work like that you guys all right so if you have to do it all on the same day that is a-okay because when I made this I did it all on the same day I just let it sit for four hours and then I didn't and I let the seasoning sit for like two hours okay all right so now I'm just going ahead and I put it on the stove and I'm going to go ahead and let that boil, you guys. And I'm going to go ahead and cut up some bell peppers because we will need this later on. All right. We got some red. We got some yellow. We got some green. Chop it, chop it, chop it, chop it up, chop it up. Then I got an onion and I got a whole onion. And this is how I'm, go I'm cutting up my bell peppers just like this. Kind of big like that. We don't want them no smaller than that. Just like this, you guys. All right. Then we're going to go ahead and cut up our onions and we're cutting it big just like that you see how i'm just taking them you see how, how big those slices is that's how we want them to be all right and then we're gonna go ahead and check on our grill and it is boiling and you see how it's making all this water on its own because remember i never told you guys to add any water so all this water that you see that's this thing doing this thing by its damn self y'all yes sha <laughs> I'm trying to tell you so you don't need to add any water with the with the pork it's gonna make its own water you guys and we're just gonna continue to let that thing boil give it some time so the seasonings could get up in that meat so this thing could be scrumptious all right and now this is how you know when your meat is cooked you see how i'm able to put that pork in there and i'm able to break that meat like that that mean that the meat is cooked you guys it's ready it's ready it's ready for frying y'all that's how you know and with grio it is not obvious optional to, to to fry your meat before you boil it you have to boil your meat 
you have to or if you just fry it like it will be inedible you will not be able to eat it it will be disgusting it will be hard it will be chewy it will be trash so make sure you boil your meat before you fry it you have to all right so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put that thing in a deep fryer I have my deep fry at 360 degrees and I'm going ahead and adding all my meat in there and I'm gonna go ahead and drop them so that they can fry one thing i gotta let you guys know about grio is you see how i only got a little bit of meat and i put it in there it's because when we're taking the grio we're taking it from that from that pot I, it was just in and it still have all that liquid in there and you know with liquid it makes the um the oil rise so if you put too much grio at once and it has too much liquid in there what's gonna happen is the oil is gonna rise and it can even go over your deep fryer and be and fall on the on, on the counter i'm speaking from experience you guys and even if you're not using Using a deep fryer and you're using just like a pot to fry it in if you put too much at once it's going to um at the same time at once it's gonna overflow so that's why i like to add a little bit like at, at in the deep fryer first and then as it's already in a deep fryer and some of that liquid went away i like to add the others in there like you see i just did with that one and we want to fry our grill soft. We don't want our grill to be too hard because don't nobody want no god darn hard ass meat, okay? So fry it soft. We don't want it to be too dark and burnt. All right, you see how I put a little bit in there and then now you see I'm adding more? That's how. That's how you do it so you can make sure the oil don't rise and come all the way to the top and overflow, you guys. And be careful with grill. You might need to cover it when it's cooking because that shit be popping. It be popping, 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 popping. You will get burned, all right? I'm trying to tell you, you might have to cover it up messing with the grill. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. You better listen, all right? So I'm just going ahead and shaking it to make sure all of that meat get in that oil and all of them can fry and they can fry thoroughly. Again, you want to fry your grill soft. You don't want to fry it too hard because don't nobody want no hard pieces of meat, you guys. All right. And then when it's done, you're just going to go ahead and rise it and we're going to shake it, shake it, shake it up a little bit because we want to make sure we don't get that excess oil in there, you guys. All right. And here we go, just like that. We're doing the little shake I told you about. And then we're going to go ahead and add that griot meat to our other griot meat, you guys. And um, just like that, that's how you do it. You fry it and right there, you're done. You're going to continue to do this until you have fried all your meat, you guys. All right. And um, when you're done frying all your meat, this is the water, the juices actually that came from the grill when we boiled it. We're not going to throw it away. What I'm going to do is I'm going to strain it. I'm going to take those bell peppers and onions I chopped up. Y'all remember them? We're going to go ahead and take a strainer and put it over there. Then we're going to go ahead and put those juices from the grill in that strainer so we can go ahead and strain the juice because it has pieces of meat in there. It has the parsley and thyme in there that we have put in there. Um, probably the bonnet peppers that 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 um dissolved in there too. And we don't need that. It look kind of it look gross. We don't need all that. We want it to be. Um, we want our our juice to be like clean. All right. So we're just gonna go ahead and strain it like this. And then we're gonna take this part right here that's in the strainer, and we're gonna dispose of that. All right. And then we're just gonna continue to do that until we have used all the juice, or how much juice you think you will need. You don't really need all the juice because sometimes when I'm making a big amount, I never use up end up using taking all of the juice because it's too much. But right here, I didn't make a lot, so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use up all the juice. Okay. So here we go again. I'm just taking it and I'm straining it and then I'm gonna go ahead and take the remaining pieces of meat or whatever that's in there and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna dispose of that you guys and I'm gonna do this until I have used up all of my liquid yes just like that then when I'm done doing this and I have all the liquid I'm gonna go ahead and put another pot on the stove and I'm gonna let that pot get hot and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pour that juice in the bell peppers in there and I'm just gonna um, let it cook just a little bit so my um, peppers and onion little adante I don't want them to be too soft and you see how clean that 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 is if you want to make some gravy that goes on the rice because if you go to a Haitian restaurant ever they always give you a little red gravy and it goes on the rice you could just put some tomato paste in this and it will be red and it will be your sauce for your rice all right and here I'm just taking those bell peppers and onions and I'm putting it over my griot. This is for decoration. This is so it can look pretty. This is how you're going to set off your dish. This is what's going to make your dish 
everything. You know, when people eat, you have to remember the first thing they do is eat with their eyes. So you always want to make your food look appealing and delicious, delicious and delicious and just everything. So you're going to go ahead and take those pieces and you're going to pour them over the grill. And we have all these beautiful colors and it just make this look this 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 dish look so exciting. And we're going to go ahead and take some of that juice and we're going to pour it over the meat. This will help for your grill not to be too dry because it gives it some moisture and this is the same juices that the grill made so this is this is the meat's juice you know so it's gonna make it not dry and it's gonna make your meat tender and it's gonna make your meat everything you guys all right and you're just gonna do that you're not gonna use all the juice on there i only use like two to three spoons that's it the remainder i'm gonna leave it for my sauce for my rice you guys and there you have it that's it. I went ahead and fried some plantains and I have my pickles. I will have in the description box um, a link to how you make the pickles, how you make the fried plantain. And the, and, and that's that's it. There you have it. It don't get no better than that, y'all. Lord have mercy. Thank you for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.